Okay, so so uh, what we have discussed last day also, like uh, about the like the access specifiers, right? In Java, right? You can see, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, if we have two packages, so this is a package. Suppose one, and this is another package, right? Correct. Okay, so uh, suppose here I have a class. Now the first question is this class can be accessed by any class or some specific class. The first thing is like if I have the classes within the same package, then this all can access this. Correct. However, if the class is belongs to some other package, they will be able to access this class only if it's a child if class. If it is a child public class. Correct. Okay. So next we do what? Suppose I have some data items here. It may be a method or it may be a, a instance variable. Suppose I have A, B, C, D, and E. And we have this A as public. Correct. B protected. Protected. Default and private. C is uh, default. And D is private. So I don't know why I took E. Uh, if you go to .NET platform like Vim.NET and uh, Shishab, they are having basically another also. So anyhow, uh, there are four. So now the first thing about the public, if I say this is a public, so this can be accessible anywhere. So it is accessed by any class. So I don't have any problem to access it. So this can access A, this can access A, this can access A, this can access A. Okay. So next assumption is suppose this class is inherited and say this class also inherited, although this arrow should be open arrow. Anyhow, okay. So these two classes are inherited. So net now let us check out what about this B. Who can access B? B can be accessed within the package and uh, by the class, which is a subclass. Yeah, so it's a B. OK, now about the C. C is a default, so accessibility is within the package. Only the package. And about D, it is within the same That's class. Class, only the same class. Correct, correct. Hmm. OK, so now what is your doubt? Now the question, sir, if you go back to that quiz question, should I screen share my screen or yes, or? yes, yes, you can share. Now, I I was I blindly applied this logic because there was a nice video of yours yeah, from yeah. last term, uh, which I had sorry one second, which I had referred to. And uh, it was like fairly sure of that question. But that was the only question I ended up making a mistake. One second. You can share it. Okay. Yeah, I'm just pulling out. Okay, one second. I'll just share my screen. Basu, can I share it immediately? No, no I have it here. Have okay, it. okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, I think that's all. I'm just scrolling. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. 
part this so now uh, now in this one can you see my screen sir? yeah you may trace it from that line number three that will be much easier i think yeah line, number, part of line number yeah, three yeah, yeah line number three right now can you maximize your screen or can you increase the size a bit yeah that's okay Huh, yeah. So C dot add, right? Okay. So now, what is C? C is calculator object. Okay. Right. Now my question is, is add a member of calculator? It's not. Not. So but it is extending. Is no, no, it is but it is extending, no, sir. It is inheriting, right? Yes, it is it is Correct. inheriting, yes. So it is inheriting. Yes, sir. Now the question is, can it inherit or not? Right? Yeah, so uh, it can, can inherit. Yes, yes, because it is protected. It can inherit. Yeah. It can inherit. It yeah. Next it question is, yeah, next question, go to the line number three. Next question is, now from the test class, can I call the add class? Uh, add class, sorry, add method which belongs to. I say now calculator. So why not? Because it's not because a direct the... member, right? It's an inherited member. Uh, so sir, actually, but... existence of the member is within. Sir, I'm I'm calling this add method. Okay. Hello. Yeah, you're calling the add. I'm calling it add method. It is... It is not a member of calculator, right? It's an inherited member of calculator. Okay. But sir, that is the objective of inheritance. No, sir, once we are inheriting, so we are getting all the members from the parent class. The code extender, code reusability and code re-extendability, that is the objective of inheritance. No? Yeah, that is I'm agreeing. I'm saying you are getting it. Yes. But it is not a member, right? Uh, fair enough, sir, but this code will run now. Why line number? I think what Basu is trying to ask, and I am having the same question, which I was trying to ask on that day, then he said, I will discuss after OPP2. Why line number three will throw an error? That is, the, I think, a problem with Basu is also trying to understand. Have you run this code? I couldn't structure these two uh, as two different packages. I didn't know how to structure them. That's Otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered you so much, sir. Uh, I just I got like, it. I'll, I'll try to check out if I can do this program. because they, if it's a, no, no, I very, got you. I got you. I'll try to check, show you if I can do this. Uh, sir, this is eight, eight marks, sir. I would have got, I would have got full marks if I got this right. No, no, uh, that's okay. I want to. I just, uh, sir, you can run the question, oh. sir. Sir, you can uh -huh. run the question, but the, you can run this question. Uh, but the basic problem is that as per the learning of inheritance. Sir, uh, this right. line should not throw an error. That is the understanding which I am having, and I think Basu is also having the same. Yeah. Sir, I, sir if I, I, I'll, I'll tell you uh, I'll, uh, before you come. No, no, the, see, the problem, what you are saying that the add by inheritance coming into the calculator, and if I can access the calculator, why I cannot access the add? Right? Are you saying that? Yes, yes. Yeah, because calculator. Now it will become a bottleneck in the security, right? It will? So, suppose it will become a bottleneck in the security, right? Suppose you have two packages, right? W one second, sir. One second. Sir, who, uh, whoever is not talking, can you go on mute, please? There's a lot of background noise. Yeah, go ahead, sir. I'm saying, suppose you have a class in two different packages, right? Hmm. Now, for one class, there are protected member because intended. It is intended that any other class belongs to the package which are not inherited should not access it. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. But what I can do then, I can write another class into the package which will inherit it. Right. Then I can through that class I'll make the access to that member, right? Yes, sir. But in the, the, if you go by that logic, this is another package where there is a method, right? Now, mm -hmm. this method can only be accessed by this class, which is the calculator class, although it's in the it's in a different package. 
I'm agreeing the calculator can access the add method of that class, right? Which is the Correct. class name? Math utility. Math utility. Math utility. Math utility. Math utility. Yeah. Correct. But now question is, does mean which belongs to the test one class access the add method of that particular class it's that not accessing the add method right it's access it's access it's created the object and the object is accessing right but is it like so then what do we have to do then we have to create something else in this calculator class which then can be accessed by this is that how we do the it? add can be accessed only within the inherited class that's the point is very confusing, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, just a second, sir. Uh, it may be that Basu has understood, but I'm still no, not I, getting I didn't, it. I didn't understand. I'm just, but, but I'm still not getting it because everything happens inside the class where main function is written, right? This is this is this we are learning from the day one. Everything you know, every will happen on the main function. I didn't now I lost. What do you mean to say? I said that from the day one it has been taught to us that there is something called main function and main function is sitting inside a class, right? Uh -huh. So now every operation is happening inside that class only where main function is written. So now how come we, I can't... No, I never this. told that everything will happen in the main function. No, uh, GP, GP, I, yes, I, I have not... Just just I have not got it. Yeah, yeah, finish. Yeah, just let me re rephrase my problem. Sir, uh, sorry, it may be that I am not able to explain. Okay, let me just. Uh... Hey, think, it, think, you think it about. Suppose here you don't have the object of C. Right? Sorry, calculator. Rather, you have created directly of object of a, that math, math utility class. Then you are calling that object dot at. Will it call? No, it won't. No, I'm asking. Uh, yeah, uh, sir. Yeah. yeah. No, sir. Uh -huh. let, yeah, sir. Let, let us come to that point itself. Uh, uh, we will come to this again. But now this is a. Uh, something which we need to uh, at least i need to understand properly yeah. uh, uh, there is a, everything is a class in java what what we are getting mm -hmm. and then there is something main function which is static in nature so that we can access it without getting the object and it is sitting inside a class right mm -hmm. so whatever operations we have been doing till now might mm -hmm. be that there are other practices but we have not followed that everything is happening inside that class only that uh, the, 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 the program starts no, no, concept. we have created separate class also. Main yes, is other class. They classes that. are there, but directly uh, when, when when we are creating the object, everything is happening inside the main function. No, this I think in one of the live session I have I had asked this question. Then uh, it was answered that yes, everything happens inside the main function. We are creating object of no, that. No, process. I'm not agreeing with this. How everything sir, will happen sir, in the main uh, function? Sir, that is also not intended uh, thing of Java. Arup sir, I I know what his question is asking. Can can I answer that if you are yes yes please please so you are right gp but so far except for this problem so far we've never dealt with these two separate packages all our problems were in the same package so this yes, problem yes. never arose yes sir. this problem never arose so what you are saying is also right you are we'll call everything from the main function right but this problem of cross packages has never come up right till only in this problem it has come up right so there's no issue nothing happens in this case what sir if what i understood is i can let's say i if i have to use this c dot add here somehow i have to call that add function within math utility and pass yeah, that it value is, it out. is all about the scoping scoping right so accessibility of add is within the scope of class calculator it is not beyond that okay so had I, let's say, created another class saying, you know, uh, whatever, uh, in whatever, return add something like that, and then called that a function and passed that value out, then this could have probably kind of accessed it or whatever, something like that. So you're saying yeah, because, you have, because if you have just inherited this taste one class from the math utility class, then this call was fine. Uh, okay, now I got it. Right, but you cannot create object of another class. Then through that you will create or call it. See, the bottleneck will be in security. Suppose your intention that you'll create two packages so that the methods between two classes are not accessible. Right, that is your intention. 
but mm -hmm. somebody can do what within your package create another class and inherit another class from another package so he will get access to the protected members now what you can do if this happens now through your class you will be able to create the object of the class which is there in your own package mm -hmm. and you'll be able to access indirectly everything right so the protection entirely will go off yeah right so there is no point to make it unprotected right so it becomes like a public so the programming part i don't know like maybe they haven't shown it yeah ganga prasad you can uh, please yeah yeah oh. I, was just, I was just trying to say sir that's why i, I unmuted uh -huh. myself yeah, uh, yeah. And the question is gone i think basu could you please bring it back so that uh, uh -huh. Because this single question is, uh, you know, unfolding many uh, concepts, so that's why. Uh, see the same diagram which which you, you know shown to us at the beginning of the class. It was discussed in the revision session also. Huh. So the moment a member of the class is protected, right? So either huh. we can access it through uh, within the class, uh, or uh, uh, within the inherited class, right? Within the same package or inherited class? Huh, inherited class and this inherited class can be uh, in other sitting in other package also right because i am yeah. importing the function uh, uh, package also as per this question because there yeah. are two packages so now okay. the moment i have created this uh, calculator class and my cal calculator class is extending math utility right so mm. it, is, it means it is a child class of math utility so i am inheriting all the members from my uh, uh, math utility class so now mm. my calculator class is child class so of mm -hmm. course, I will create the object of child class only. Then only I will be able to access this function, add function, right? Yeah. So so now the same the, that thing is only happening no? so inside the class. No, no, you are not not looking at the scoping. See the scope. What is the scope of protected? So you can do it, but the scope is different for protected. Protected, the scope is saying it is accessible within any class within the same package and any class which is inherited it now the inherited constraint is fulfilled by the calculator but test to on this class does it fulfilling the constraint think about the scope you read the scope and lifetime in the first week right hmm. so the scope is not permitting like scope say from where you are accessing what the scope say the area of your program from where you can access right so the scope of a protected say you can access it from any class which is within the same package or it is inherited right now if you look at that you are trying to access the add from a class test one which is neither belongs to the same package nor it is inherited Then, say for example, okay, uh, then in that case, if I have to run this add function, mm -hmm. so how I will run it? How I will run it, this add function? If you That's just a... generate that test one class, if you just write here class test one extent math utility, this code will work, right? But instead of creating instance of calculator, you have to create the instance of math utility. That's... Even you don't have to do it, you can just call it as add, that will work. No, if I if I am writing the line that class test one extending math utility, sorry, calculator, because calculator is extending math utility and then test one is extending calculator, right? Mm. So in that case, I will have to create the object of uh, test one class and then only I will be able to call it, right? I didn't give you. Can you repeat? <clears throat> you said that the class test. I will no, have your to objective is I should be able to call the add function inside test one, right? Yes. Okay. If you want to do that, either the test one class belongs to the same package where the add method is there. That's one way. The second way, the test one class should inherit the math utility class. So what you can do, you or can, it write, can in, or it can inherit calculator class also, na? Let it inherit calculator class also because ah, so what is the problem if I'm also inheriting the test one extent? Math utility. utility. Okay, directly we are. No, I am saying you that. You need to call this add directly. You cannot call it through calculator. Because if test one is inheriting, 
the math calculus, math utility, then your test one itself having the add, right? Because it's a protected member, so it can directly access. Why it will take a indirect path through the calculator to access? So, so for protected members, say for example, within the same package, mm -hmm. so whether it is a child class or not, it doesn't matter. It can be accessed from any yeah. class. Yeah. But if we are dealing in uh, other package, then it has to be inherited, right? Yeah. Uh, though I'm not uh, okay, I will watch the recordings again and I will try to figure it out. To be very honest, I'm still not clear. But just tell me one thing, sir. It might be a very silly question to ask uh, you know, uh, during the uh, week 10 session. That the, what is the significance of class where main function is being written? Because to be very honest, till now, my understanding is that everything starts from the main function and everything is being written inside the main function. Like, okay, we are creating other classes, we are creating classes. Uh, uh, it's apart from the class which has the main function but while the question comes to create an object and other things that that we are the, that we have been doing since day one inside the main function only i don't know whether i went wrong with this uh, silly concept but uh, what other things i don't know but if we go through the any recordings or any problem of graded or ta everything happens uh, inside the main function everything is happening inside the test inside that class where main function is setting so could you please tell what is the significance of class which is having the main function? Okay, so there is a class loader inside the JVM which loads the class to be executed, right? The code to be executed for that class. So whenever you start your program, so the class having the main function or the public class of your program that will be loaded first by the class loader in the, into the memory. That's all. That is the only the significance of the class having the main method. So the class having the main method or the class which is a public class within your entire file, Java file, that is the first class to be loaded in your memory through the class loader. That is only the significance. There is no other significance. Okay. Say for example, my main function has been loaded now, right? Huh? And if I'm not, now if I have not defined anything, and yeah. I want to now run this add function, which is defined inside the calculator class. So how this nothing will happen. happen. So first your test class is loaded. Now on the next line, it will basically having a call calculator C new calculator. That will load calculator class. It will instantiate object of it, right? Now whenever you are calling C dot add, it will try to call the add method, which should be there inside your calculator class. Now since it is inherited, so it will try to get an object of math utility within the class of calculator and try to get you access to the data uh, sorry add but in this case the runtime won't start at all so there is no question of loading because add is called from outside of the scope so compilation itself will fail right so there is no question of execution Okay, fair enough. Got it. Got this point that uh, as I said that, say for example, if I have defined the add function inside the calculator class in this package, I have not written anything inside the main function. Then you are saying nothing will be executed, right? So doesn't it mean that we are going back to the same concept that if I have to call any method or any anything, so that I am supposed to write inside the uh, uh, you know main function itself, right? Or inside the class which is holding the main function? Is this a valid statement or a wrong statement? I just want to know this fact. The statement itself is not clear to me. Like Basu, if you can understand, I can tell no, you. No, I could. Just can you? I was about to ask GP. Can you just repeat that last line, GP? <clears throat> okay. Now, fair enough, Basu. So, see that what I'm trying to say. Since week one, we have been seeing that uh, there is a uh, function named main, and hmm. that is sitting inside a class, right? Correct. And now whatever, of course, we are, let, let us take any example like employee manager and all those things, manager extending mm -hmm. employee mm -hmm. class and mm -hmm. all those mm -hmm. things. Suppose mm -hmm. we are writing outside the main class. Let mm -hmm. us name that main class. Main class is having main function. So it will be mm -hmm. convenient to communicate. So there are many other classes, employee and manager and all those things. And then main class is there, which is holding main function. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever operations we are doing, we have been doing inside the main function itself. Is this correct or not? Yeah, see the... You are correct. In the, see, for example, if so, in, this so in case, in this case, when I ask, when I ask that if I have to run this add function, if I am defining it inside the calculator class, then Sarah is also agreeing. You know, nothing will run. 
because you are not calling this function inside the test uh, test class right so again we are converging to the same concept now that the, whatever we have to do in java we have to write uh, those you know final line of actions inside the main function only so is this is your your see a series of this is a very these are very small program right i mean series of actions can happen the main function is just the starting point because the program needs to know where to start executing from right that is the first thing because main allows you not to you don't have to create an object see i could okay i I'll, let me just see if this is helps suppose i take this main function public static void main and put it under you uh, calculator class do you think it will work as per me it will run wherever main sure. function is sitting my main, compiler, it, it, my compiler will go and search there itself. Correct, 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 right, correct. Right. So main it doesn't have to be a separate class. Main can sit anywhere. Right. Right. The what I misunderstood from the diagram which Sir showed earlier and earlier lecture also watched versus what he's saying now, what I understood is that see because add is accessible to calculator class because it is hmm. it is extend it's a child class. It's not accessible beyond that class. If I want to access it, either this test class or whatever we want to call it main class has to either inherit from calculator or the main math utility, or we have to create another way of passing that value from or whatever, do the calculate, pass that value back to this. Like if you remember that iterator we have learned, right? Because you can't access a private class, you create an iterator, iterator object is passed and then you access it outside. Right, so you'll have to do some roundabout thing like that. That's what I've understood from here. So that question is you now leave me. That is somewhat clear. What sir is saying that if we can uh, write one one more uh, line that class test one extends math utility, hmm. then line three will not throw error. That is any of clear now. Now just my I'm just trying to understand why I'm taking too much time. We can drop this question after one minute. Am I just I'm just trying to understand the utility of main function. One thing is clear that the program starts from the main function. Now, if I'm saying inside the main function, say for example, in this case itself, let us take the last line system dot out dot ln Fibonacci sum and all these things, right? Hmm. If I am not writing this inside the main function, will my program run or not run? I'm sure it will not run. That is the obvious understanding. No, it, you know, it, is, it is running, but there is nothing to run. There's nothing to execute. That's what I'm saying. If we are, if I'm not writing inside the main function, it will not run. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I'm not it's, it's it's not run. Matlab, it will load. It will start, but there is nothing to run. So what will it run? It's empty. That's what you're saying, right? It's empty. How okay, come it's empty? That uh, Fibonacci sum is defined, na? No, no. You're saying that if I don't write anything here, then it won't run, na? What do you? I'm saying do? that inside the main function, if I don't write and I write this in, inside any class, it will not run. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, you're leave it. Inside the main method, you're not writing anything, right? Inside the yeah, yeah, inside the main function, I'm not writing the last line. Then wherever I am writing, this will not run because I have to. No, no you can some... write somewhere else also. No, you can write it on the add method because main is calling the add method. So you can have this printed directly from yeah, the add method. If you call the, you call the add method, it will it will it will show you as the output. So many times we do right when we do a constructor or something like that. We say void print and I don't know print that. something. Okay, leave it, sir. This question. I am taking my question back. It may be that I am not able to come. No, no, it's, it's simple. Word, let, let me write a small program while you are doing that. No, no, it, 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 it will no, spoil the source. No, 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 you will clear it up because uh, today's agenda no problem, will spoil. Like, it. Just, I'll take again Tuesday. Don't worry. I'll take class. Sir, sir you go ahead and uh, you go ahead and you you start your this thing, sir. I'll take two minutes to do it. Yeah, you can do it offline, Basu, and then yeah. we can connect uh, towards the end of the session. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll go for the thread thing, right? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead, sir. You start, sir. Okay. So, can I share? Yes. I'll stop. Okay, so are we all uh, okay with creating a thread? Like last day I was discussed, like I have discussed that join method. 
but are you okay like how threads are created how they run this kind of thing hello hello am i audible uh, no sir i haven't followed threads that much yet so i, I okay so there. what about others then i may start from the beginning itself right that is what i'm asking yeah that may be helpful sir it is it is better to start from the beginning but the join i have already done last day so whenever you're coming for next class like tuesday again i'll take a class because today it won't be complete i need to leave at seven um i'll start the thread so what is the concept of thread you can see right here yes sir you're yeah so basically the point is here to create a multitasking system a multitasking uh, operation right so where i can do multiple tasks simultaneously right now which can be achieved in uh, mainly two way it could be a multiple processing like multiple processes are running parallelly and it could be a multi threading where multiple threads of the same process means different parts of the same process or different function of the same process running concurrently right so what happened in the multi processing whenever you have a process right you basically define some subtax within it so suppose i say this is the subtax a i say this is the subtax b and the total task say it's named as a main so i need to remember any program you are running that's by default having a thread which is called as a main thread so any java program you are running that's run by a thread which is called as a main thread so you create a thread or not always jvm will create a thread for you which is a default thread which takes care of executing your entire program so all the programs you write in java it's single threaded and the only thread exist in your program that is the main thread that is the main thread right so now what a thread means a thread called a sequence of execution in your code so if you have only one thread so you'll have a single sequence of execution so how the single sequence of execution happens suppose uh you start with the main function then main function call f main function call g main function call h now from f suppose you are calling a function i you are calling a function j so like this you are having this g you are having the function h now you need to understand the entire execution is a sequential execution so if you just think it is a single sequence of execution so this is the thread which execute the f then it specifically goes into the f then goes for i then it search for where is i suppose here i have written the i here i have written the j so it goes for executing i then come back then it say goes for j it goes for j execute the j come back here then go back to main then go for h execute here come back here go for h execute h come back here and this is the end so thread is close so you can understand the every operation happening in a sequential way and there is a specific definition or ordering of the instructions right a uh, definite ordering of the instruction of your code right it cannot be unpredictable anyway it should always follow the same sequence of execution so one thread means one path of execution so which will be followed between all the function main is calling then that function is calling something so it's a single sequence of execution but think about a situation the main comes now main want to call three functions if g h and the if g h are defined here 
Now main once it executes, then it starts it, but it do not stop here. It goes here, also start this, it goes next, also start this. That means the main thread is coming here, then creating a new sequence of execution. Again, it's coming here. It is also creating a new sequence of execution. It is coming here, creating a new sequence of execution. So it's execute here, return here. It execute here, return here. It execute here, return here. Now the thing is will happen if I'm going like this. So main don't have to wait here. Say main calls f, then wait for return of f. That never happens where, which was happening over here. So I was calling f, f was calling something, then g was calling f, f again calling something. They will, they will turn the task, then f will return, then I'll call g. What I'm doing, the main is coming here. It is creating a new path of execution. It is creating a new thread. Let that thread execute the f. I'll be executing independently. So I'll call simultaneously g also. Assign g a thread. The G also will execute simultaneously. I'll go next. I'll execute age also simultaneously. Right. So the things I'll say F G and age will be executing concurrently. Does it make sense what I have done? Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. It's okay, no? Yeah. yeah. But how we will make it concurrent? This is the question. Ah, yeah. So now, it's assume I'm having a single processor, right? And I want to run the function fgh concurrently, right? So how I can get it? I can have this all the functions running simultaneously when I have a single processing unit. It can at a time execute one thing, right? Yeah. So suppose it's having three lines. Suppose it's having four lines. Suppose it's having two lines, right? So maybe I have three lines. Here, four lines. And maybe here I have two lines. So what happened? So let it first execute the one line for F. Then it execute one line for G. Then let it execute one line for H. Then again, it's go for one line of F. Then execute one line of G. Then again, execute one line of H. Right? Then again, execute one line of F, sorry, I can execute one line of F, right? So like this, if it is happening, it we use a term, we say it is executing it in an interleaved way. What do you say? The statements are executed in a interleaved way. So I cannot execute two things simultaneously, really. But what I can do, I'll execute some part of everything one after another, and I will do it so fast for user, it will look like the things are happening simultaneously. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. But th th this is not concurrent, right? Because this is just an illusion of concurrent. This is concurrent. This is not parallel. Oh, this is concurrent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Parallel, this is one, after, one after, after the other. Yeah. Parallel means you are having multiple processors. Correct. And which processor taking care of each things. So that's basically a real simultaneous thing. But interleaved things are called concurrent. So this is an interleaved executions. So threads are always executed in a interleaved way. So what benefit you get? The benefit I get on the response time. Why? See, if I do a sequential way, F, G, and H in this sequence, H has to wait until unless F is completed, H is completed, then only H will start. Now, suppose some way G got blocked. It got some error or there is something happened. 
which is taking some IO is happening, which is taking a long time, right? So age ultimately will suffer for that. That's one problem, right? Whenever I'm going sequentially, but if I go in a interleaved way, even G having a problem, so let G process may stop or it may be blocked, but age do not won't be affected by it, right? Because it will go as per the sequence because the things are happening on an interleaved way. So it won't be waiting for G's completion, right? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Next thing will happen about the response time, right? So every one of us used internet, right? So suppose you are doing a registration. I am also doing a registration on the same portal. So we all of us were doing the registration on a portal. Suppose it's a sequential process. So I have to complete my registration so that you can start your registration. Then Basu also has to wait that you will complete your registration so that Basu has to start his registration, right? So that's pathetic, right? But in this way, whenever I'm doing the simultaneous thing, like, sorry, concurrent thing, rather I say, nobody has to wait for others, right? We can do the thing simultaneously. Maybe it will take some more time but it's okay because i am starting the thing right so that's another benefit the response time will be very nice okay so this will be my objective and how i want can get it so java having two things it's having a class called as a thread class which belongs to java.lang package. Java also having an interface called as a runnable. So both are the ways to create a thread in Java. In both the thing, there is an abstract method which is called a run method. So inside the run method, whatever you say, so since it is an abstract method, whether you extend thread or you implement runnable you need to implement run because it's an abstract method so you need to write something inside it right you need to sorry you need to implement it i should not say write into it you need to implement it so whatever tasks you write inside the run method that's supposed to be run by a thread that's supposed to be run by a yes runnable is an interface no? Yeah. Thread is a class. Is interface, thread is a method, sorry, class. Okay. Abstract class, rather. Um, both are having the. Run uh, thread is not an abstract or it's abstract. I cannot remember anyway. I have to check it. So both are having this method, which is an abstract method. That's a run method, right? which is called a run method. So either you extend the thread or you implement runnable. So you need to implement the run method. And whatever the code you write inside the run method, that will be run by a thread. That will be run by a separate thread. Right. Now, what is the difference? Right. Now, suppose you have a class A, which inherits the thread class, right? Now, whenever you instantiate an object of this, if you instantiate an object of class A, this object itself is a thread object. This object is a object of a thread object. So whatever you write inside the run method of the A class, that code will be executed whenever you call the method obj.start. So obj.start, basically, we say it creates a new thread. Start, it's not a create, it's a start a new thread, rather I'll say. Where but, is this start method is defined? In the thread or? In the thread class. It means in the thread class, there are two methods, run and start. There are many methods. So okay. it's not an abstract class, sir. It's just a class. Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a real class. That's why I stop. 
So run must be abstract in somewhere else, which is inherited by thread. And by the thread, I'm getting it. OK, so then this obj dot, if I call run method, what will happen? Then also I call the run method. But I don't start up. So if I call the run method, it will be extension of the main method, main thread only. So I'm making main thread to call the run, right? So run will be executed by the main thread itself. It's just like any calling any other method, right? So I have a method f inside a class A, right? And from the main, I'm calling the I'm calling an object of I'm creating an object of A, and I'm creating obj dot if. So which thread is executing? It's basically executed by the main thread only because it executes then return back here, right? But if I do this extend thread, even though the same thing will happen, but it will be done in a separate way so that instead of calling this, so it, it should be run now. If I just create obj.run, it's result the same because it's basically extension of the main thread. So main thread will execute the run. But instead of doing that, if I say obj.start, in that case, your main thread is not blocked. Any statement is there next to this statement will be executed immediately. But you need to understand you are creating another thread which will simultaneously will start running the run method. So now the main method, sorry, main thread and the thread running the run methods are executing concurrently. Is it OK? I'll show it programmatically. It makes you easy. If, if, if the sir here, if the sir, just, if the uh, the obj dot run is going back to the main method, it's running from yeah. The it will start. return back because it's a sequential. So it will block the main method execution. It will go for executing the function. Then once the function return again, the main method will resume. Right? It's normal like a function call. Okay. So and I call the method, I'll go execute the method, then I'll return back to the main and then I'll execute the rest of the part, right? Yeah, if there was anything after start, let's say obj dot something display or something like that, it has to then, wait, right? then start would have executed that because you've created yeah, a new Yeah, start thread. won't stop your main thread because you're creating another thread, so both are executing simultaneously. Okay. Okay, we want to see this, right? So that makes the things clear. Uh, uh, in huh. the start method, what is the code written in the block? The start method block. So you don't have to know, right? Why you want to know that? Okay, it is it, okay. It is written already, right? Implementation. You can see. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, but uh, so no, what is it? What is, uh, the start method is doing? It is uh, hidden. No, the no, start method. It's not hidden. You know it. It's kind of a black box you need to see, but what is the output of it or what is the function? It's clearly known. It creates a new thread. It's for the new thread, actually. Okay, this is the inbuilt function of this. I'm create a threaded class, right? I'm naming it as a threaded class. I say extends thread. Now, what I need to do, I have to have this public void run. Here I just write a simple code in i equal to 0, i less than, uh, I'll start with say 1, say 1, I say it's a 10, i plus plus, I say dot out print ln and I want to print the value of i. That's all. Okay, I just write a print. Then I space. So it will be on the same line. It will be easier. Okay, so I want to create a thread. Creating a thread is just like creating an object of thread class, threaded class. So if it's a th1. 
equal to new credit class right now i want to say th1.start and at the same time also print the thing but rather it prints now 11 to 20 here now let me run the program What is happening? So you can see the interleaved operation, right? 11, 1, 12, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then again this thing. So it's quite a unpredictable, but you can see that operations are happening in an interleaved way because whenever 11 to 20 is coming, means it is the output from the main thread, right? It is the output from the main thread. When this output 1 to 10 is coming, means it is coming from the Th1, Th1. Th1, right. Now you can see the output in much better way so that if I make this interleaving thing much predictable, the point here we are telling that like uh, some part of this, some part of this, but how time will be given to each of the threads, it depends on the CPU frequency, like what is the time it takes to execute one instruction, right? Along with that, there are several processes are running. So hundreds of processes are simultaneously running inside your CPU. They are also sharing the time. And they are also having priority. This okay. operating system having a higher priority than your process. So whenever they want to execute, they'll be given a higher priority to execute. So sir, can I just go back to the output, sir? I, I... Yeah. The output was. Can you run once more, Matar? Once run. Again, so that's what is I just want to ask one question, sir. Yeah. So the uh, the uh, which one is the main thread here, sir? The start one is the main hey. thread. No, start start is the sub thread, new thread. Yeah, th one is the uh, sub thread. Yeah, the child thread rather, I'll say. So this is printing one to ten. You can actually print the thread also. Thread name also sir, can be printed. Sir, sir, child thread is printing eleven to twenty. Correct. In this you case. can also print it. There is no confusion. Actually, you can say, I may have to see the syntax. So there is a current thread. So it returns you the current thread which is executing your code, and there is a get name method. So it will return a default name. It gives a default name to every thread. You can get it. Mm. So you can also assign a name for each thread. That's also you can do. But uh, I'm not sure about the if I wrote the function names properly. Yeah. See, this thread zero is the default name of your child thread, and the main is the main thread. So that's what I'm getting confused. With. So how is start? Start is calling run. Run is the sub child. Okay, okay, okay. So, whatever the tasks you have given inside the run, that will be executed by the thread one, th1. That's the, that's the child thread. Okay, got it. But see, the significance of start, start will start the new thread to be running. But if you just don't call the th1 dot start, if you just call the runs directly, then Although you have created your new thread, you are not executing the thread. So run method is invoked by the main thread itself. So in this case, you'll find the output is getting sequential and everything getting executed by the main thread. The thread one never executed because main thread will start, sorry, th one thread will be starting whenever you call the start. So whenever I call run method directly, it's like the main method going into this, executing this, then coming up. So that's why whenever I call the run, it's execute 1 to 10 first, then come back here, execute the rest of the part, right? So you won't get this concurrency if I call the run because you are creating the thread but not executing it. So this th1.start actually makes the thread running 
it starts the thread, right? So that's why you get the simultaneous thing. Although it is an interleaf, but you cannot predict how the interleaving thing will happen because this order is not predictable. It is decided every time by your scheduler inside the processor, right? Yeah. Yes. Line out 14, sir. Again, ch1 dot run by by commenting ch1. Yeah. What is doing? It, it, it is not running at all. Without it is a running a sequential execution. No, it's just a function call by the main itself. That is, I shown no whenever I was drawing these things. Okay, okay. Third zero is not working. Yeah. So if I create another instance of this, if I want to create another thread, rather, I should say, right? And if I make both the things to run, now I'm having three threads actually running simultaneously, right? Oh, sorry, I have called the run, right? Start. Sorry, both will be start, yeah. See, this is thread zero and thread one. These are two child threads and the main. All are executing simultaneously. So normally for thread program, what we do, we normally use a sleep function so that the output so, can be seen in a proper interleaved way. Sir, so uh, 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 1 to 10 is getting executed multiple times, correct? Two times, because two threads running the same run function, right? Correct, two times. So run function simultaneously run by two threads, right? OK, so this leap method uh, throws a interrupted exception. So I forward it. I need to also forward it from here. So uh, almost all the methods inside the thread class basically through this checked exception, interrupted exception. So if you look the output here. So you can see this interleaving thing. So what happened? Error run. OK, I cannot throw it from here because it's predefined, right? So I'm overriding it. So uh, I need to put it on a try catch. OK. Got it, right? Yeah. OK, so now one problem of this thread class is, see, if you want a thread to be implemented in a class, then you have to extend it. But you have to further extend any other class, right? There are many important class you may have to extend, right? You cannot do it, right? Because multiple inheritance is not possible. But if you can implement the thread then you can still extend something right so that is benefit of having this runnable interface so i want to show you how you can write it as a runnable interface so i'll just comment every keep it in a try catch but did not do anything no? here checked exception has to be handled no otherwise you cannot compile your code we discussed no checked exception before uh, it is handled it should be handled, right? So I say we implement the runnable and let I have the same thing here. 
run do the same thing okay so now previously have learned if you extend the thread class then your class itself becomes a thread but here if you implement runnable then your class can be executed by a thread then your class can be executed by your thread your class won't become a thread your class can be executed by a thread what is that suppose i create a thread class i create a obg equal to new Threaded class. Now I write thread th1 equal to new thread. Right. And I pass OB as an parameter of it. Means I say th can execute the threaded class object OB. Right. So the class implements runnable can be run by a thread. Okay, so I just do the same thing. There is no difference other than this concept. I run this, right? So you can find both the threads are running simultaneously. Okay, let us close here today. So I'll share the code. So you do these programs. So let us again meet on uh, uh, next Tuesday. So I'll continue with this. So once this synchronization will has uh, completed, I'll go for uh, rest of the weeks also. I'll discuss those week also. Sir, are you not coming on Saturday, sir? No, Saturday I'm not available. Saturday. Not available. Sir, then when the revision session will start, sir, those three, four sessions? <laughs> Uh, I'll do this on uh, Tuesday. Synchronization will take some time. Then again, I'll take on Thursday and Saturday. So in two classes, will it be over, sir? All the weeks for revision. See, normally the revision we do for. Uh, um, I know that's a traditional practice, but I thought that uh, you were saying. Yeah, that we'll... Normally, we'll go for, but uh, these three classes, like, we'll try to cover up these extra things, right? Okay, that's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then bye. Uh, GP, you want to discuss that? Uh, I uh, leave it that we can discuss separately also. Okay, okay, okay. Or let me come.